Let me take you back to an incident that happened a few years ago uh, involving a Piper Cheyenne, a single pilot, and an air traffic controller that build an immediate rapport, and the air traffic controller actually saves this guy's life. This thing gets real tense at several points. Watch. Big fire full emergency. One with three rooms. Charlie Roger, been advised. Green with altimeter again is a three zero zero three. Is there any way you could get emergency procedure put on this airplane? It's dis disappeared out of the airplane. Center, is that Greenville on my left? You're on three. I'm going to tell you, sir, Greenwood Airport is there on your left. All right, can you advise Tom? I'm going to do a low fly by see if I've got any gears at all. I just got horns going up everywhere. Yes, sir, they are we're on, the, we're on the other line right now with the tower. They're going to give us a gear check here in just a moment. Okay, so uh, it's not clear what he means by uh, the emergency procedure book is left. Uh, I, it sounds like it got sucked out of the airplane. Uh, I think what he's trying to say is he didn't bring it with him. Uh, it got taken out of the airplane and didn't get returned. And so now that he's got an emergency, he doesn't have his emergency procedure book with him. And he's asking, can you identify anybody that's got an emergency procedure book for this aircraft? Because he's got a Christmas tree in front of him. Everything is lit up. He doesn't even know where to begin. He's got lots of multiple things going wrong with this airplane. It's still flying. He wants to get a verification that his gear is going to come down. That's probably first and foremost on his mind. This is going to get a lot dicier as it goes. All right, I'll put it on a crown tail. From 1130, Charlie, a tower advises that they do not have a gear indication down yet, uh, for you. so no gear down yet. 1130, Charlie, where contact is lost, just tell me your altitude. No, get something out of here. It's out of the airplane. You've taken it out of here. Okay, now you hear uh, the pilot talking to whoever's on the airplane with him. I don't think it's a co-pilot. I think it's maybe a somebody that's a passenger or a friend or something uh, saying, you know, you don't have it. You took it out of here. And uh, it's, um, there's a little argument that spills over. Uh, hello. I'm sorry. I was trying to get the emergency book. Are you back with me? 113 room. Charlie Center's got you left and clear. What's your altitude? I'm at a 400 going to 5. 113 room. Charlie, Roger. What did they say about my gears? They said that no, uh, no gear indication uh, currently. You might as well go ahead and get the fire and stuff out of here. I, I, I can't tell. I don't know what to tell you guys to do right at the moment. It's really only Charlie. I believe they've uh, already been called. I can double check on that again, and we'll just make sure they've got the emergency systems uh, standing by in the, in the case that we need to do a gear up landing. Okay, so now I want you to listen to this pilot's voice. He's, he's beginning to sound resigned. He's beginning to kind of throw in the towel. That's what it sounds like to me. If I'm on the ground talking to this guy, I want to instill hope in him. Because if he checks out, like, I don't think I can do this. I think I'm going to die in this airplane. Uh, no amount of direction that you're going to give him is going to be very helpful. So you want to get him in much more of a hopeful mindset that this is going to have a good resolution. That He's going to be talking to people on the ground here in a few minutes. Uh, but right now, this pilot's in a, not in a good uh, headspace. 113, Romeo. Charlie, are you familiar with the uh, location of your um, emergency gear hand pump? Yeah, I, 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 uh oh, hang on. Hang on, hang on. I got another issue. Hang on. Okay, this is not good. Things are going from bad to worse. This guy's got worse problems now than his gear not coming down. That's right, Mitch. I missed that last part. I've got full control lock. I, got, I, can't even, I can't even get into the damn control. Pump is in the electrical system. 113, Romeo Charlie, are you able to make a, um, any, any control inputs at all left or right? I can't do anything. 113, Romeo Charlie, are you able to maintain altitude? Don't know. All right, hear the resignation in his voice. This guy is super frustrated. I've never heard of anything like this where the controls just lock up. I, I don't know what would cause that, but obviously he doesn't know either. And you're flying in an airplane and you can't move the yoke and any of the controls in and out, left or right. Man, I, it's a tough situation. One one three, Romeo Charlie, showing you a slow left hand turn. Are you able to regain some um, control input? Negative. Okay. Are you able to do um, differential thrust? 
okay, what's he asking him here? He's got twin engines. He's got an engine out on each wing. Um, that's one of the ways that you can turn an airplane. If you don't, if your flight controls don't work, you can split the engines like this and rev one up and pull another one back and the airplane will fly. It'll turn when you do that. The uh, Back in the day, the, the DC-10 that uh, was a controlled crash into Sioux City, uh, a lot of people survived that crash. They did it with differential power. They lost all hydraulics on that airplane. So their flight controls weren't working. It'll work work if you can get it to work. Uh, fuck it in the cloud now. I don't know. Right, 113, run me. Charlie, uh, we've got a hold of uh, Frank who's going to be um, going up to the tower there at Greenwood. And we're going to keep the eye on you here. Have you got a secondary radio with you? No, yeah, I, 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 can, I can go to the other radio. I'll put you on. God damn it, I'm going to dispense now. We'll be right back to this, but first a word from our sponsor. Growing up, I didn't know much about my dad's side of the family. It was like that half of the tree was just, I don't know, fogged in. No flight plan, no comms, just radio silence. But when my heritage reached out, I figured it's time to dig in, and I'm glad I did. I finally learned about my grandfather, Charles, who was born in Pennsylvania and later moved to Detroit, just before my dad was born. That might not sound like much, but for me, it brought a missing piece into focus. On my mom's side, I found records going back five generations. Farmers, factory workers, one guy who apparently tried to patent a flying machine made out of chicken wire. Didn't work, but you got to respect the ambition. Okay, I, I made that last part up, but wouldn't it have been great if he had and it were true? Now, the fair and lovely Mrs. Captain Steve was thrilled. She said, maybe now you'll stop saying you're descended from the long line of Viking pilots, to which I replied, I'm not saying I am, I'm just saying you can't prove that I'm not. Thanks to my heritage, with over 33 billion historical records, I finally have something better than just family legend. I've got facts. I've got names, and no, still no relation to the Wright brothers, but at least I didn't find the wrong brothers either. Hit the link in the description and start your 14-day free trial today. Thanks to my heritage for sponsoring this video. It really helps us to make content for you. I want to make sure you don't Charlie yes, sir, actually, at a 2,800. Just um, focus on your making your altitude first. Let's keep you in there since you got it. Some, some fuel left. Let's keep you in here as long as we can and try to troubleshoot this from uh, mm -hmm. from this angle here. And um, okay. Mr. Frank will be on the other radio at uh, Greenwood Tower and they'll be able to talk to you from there. I can't imagine. He can't get his gear to come down. He can't turn his airplane. He, he's in a descent now uh, and things are going to get even worse. <laughs> here it comes. Hey, Center, uh, Cheyenne 113, Romeo Charlie. Cheyenne 3, Romeo Charlie, go ahead, sir. Yeah, it's, just, it's going crazy. They're trying to figure it out. I, I mean, it's just like, it, I guess you can see it goes up, it, it goes down to 4,600, then it goes back up to 4,000, then it turns a left bank turn, and then it'll turn back to the right. We have uh, somebody from another area on the line with uh, with Piper directly, hmm. and they're going to try to run through a troubleshoot uh, for us and see if there's something else that we can uh, get relayed to you from them. Thank you very much. I can't imagine how petrifying this is. The airplane's out of control. It's doing things, and he doesn't know what it's doing or why it's doing it, but he can't put in any pilot controls at all. He's climbing up. He's descending down. It's turning left. It's turning right. Um, I'd be scared to death at this point. Airplane does a 360. Now the Whiffordill back and forth comes back around again. Um, this they got Piper on the phone. They're thinking I've got a runaway trim is what they're thinking. It's locked the autopilot up. Ask Piper if that's possible, okay? Everyone, we're treating with Charlie. The, the, the question is being posed right now. I've got another uh, another assistant here on the phone directly with Piper. He's listening in, and he's relaying your questions directly to them. Well, wow, this is really incredible. They're they're talking to a, a pilot, a manufacturer from Piper, who built this airplane, about what possibly going wrong. What's runaway trim? Uh, each one of the control surfaces, especially the elevator, which is, controls pitch up and down, has a little trim tab on it to trim it up into flight. So you can just basically kind of go hands off, and it'll fly nice and level. If that trim begins to run away on its own, it'll do. It'll cause all sorts of gyrations with your airplane, and it might go up and it might go down. And if he's got no control over those inputs he's just along for the ride okay thank you and there were three running trials this is a guy talking to uh piper right now he said you got a runaway trim and the autopilot locked up is the autopilot actually disconnected at this time 
Yes, sir. I, I, I'll give you guys all the information. We've recycled the autopilot. I've taken it out. I've unplugged the flight director. I've turned the generators off. I've turned the master off, and it's completely locked. And tell them it's just weird. I go into the left turn, and then it, somehow I, I go back into the right turn. And I've got zero control of it. I mean, I've got rudders. That's it. The uh, manual trim, I can't move it. I can't move it. I can't move the yoke left or right or up and down. And there are three rooms. Charlie, are you able, like, when it starts rolling, are you able to force the yoke level? I got zero control of it. It, 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 it just seems to level itself up and down. I, I, I don't know. But the, the, the trim tab is not moving at all. I mean, it's not moving manually. It's not moving automatically like it did with the autopilot. Okay. Piper's trying to track down one of their test pods for the airplane. All right. Thank you. All right. Wow. There are three Romeo Charlie. If you're able, uh, see if you can get your aircraft to start turning towards the north. Uh, you got some heavy to extreme precipitation, 12 o'clock, about 25 miles. We want to keep you away from. Okay. So with all of this going on, now he's flying into a thunderstorm. And he's like, you guys are 25 miles away from flying into bad weather. And so can you turn it around? He can't get anything to work. Man, what a day. Better, uh... 113 Romeo Charlie, I'm pushing some right rudder on it to see if I could get a, a little bit of a, of, of a right turn on it. Am I catching anything? I, I mean, I'm showing a tad bit of a turn. 3 Romeo Charlie, it's a slow turn, but it does indicate a slow turn on my side as well. I, I'm, 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 I've, got, I've got severe red in front of me at 30 miles. Severe red in front of you. He's got a color weather radar in front of him. Red is the worst. Goes green, yellow, red. Red is the, the heavy storm stuff, and he doesn't want to fly into that. That'll make things much worse. Jackson, poke uh, on the southern left. On my left rudder, I'm trying to get around, uh, but it's not doing much. Three, three, Romeo, Charlie. Piper's saying you should be able to put some muscle into the yoke with no issues. Um, see if you can put... Put some effort into it and see if you can't get that right turn started. All right. So how much muscle I have? Them? <laughs> 10 pounds or 200? There are three Romeo Charlie the Piper saying take, put as much muscle into it as it takes. Uh, you won't do any damage. If you can um, uh, arrest the turn and try not to come any further south, we're going to keep you away from most of this precipitation that we're, uh, that's looming out ahead and within about uh, 20 miles of you. Or one one three Romeo Charlie, if you're um, uh, if you want to try to go all the way back to Greenwood and burn some extra fuel, you uh, looking to set it down at um, a little bit more of a major airport with uh, some um, uh, additional services available. I'm by myself. It doesn't matter. We'll just go to Greenwood. Let's not go into metropolitan area. Okay. Okay. So I think when he says he's by himself, I I think. What we heard earlier was he was probably on his other radio talking to somebody on the ground and saying, basically, why did you take the emergency book off? And we, we overheard that conversation by mistake. So I think this guy is single piloted. Uh, but you, do you hear the resignation in his voice? He's almost like he's done. Like he's almost given up. And, and the most important thing is he keeps that positive mindset. Uh, but you got to keep this guy from giving up. Well, three, I'm sure you're still looking good. It looks like you're maintaining uh, altitude and heading. Um, that's about uh, two or three minutes out pretty consistently. This is looking um, a lot a lot better. Yeah, I'm flying it with my knees now. I got nothing left of my arm. So, so this, yeah. guy's, this guy says he's flying it with his knees now. He's got nothing left in his arms. I bet it's totally fatiguing. I had it happen once to me in a 767 where we lost a, a bus on the airplane. It's a metal bar that a lot of electronics are on. And uh, we lost some of our yaw dampers. And a big airplane like that at high altitude, it's everything you've got to keep it level. And you're fighting the controls. Uh, this guy's one guy, and he's he's getting exhausted. Yeah, we're we're going to need those here uh, once we get you uh, a little bit further inbound if for any other necessary control inputs. Hmm. Can't imagine. Number three, Romeo and Charlie, have we uh, determined about how um, how many pumps or how long it'll take for you to get that uh, gear down manually? No, I haven't, I haven't even got there yet. I don't know. I've got to... I'll have to, once we start, I just then I'll try that. 
Okay, so again, he's got the resignation in his voice. This guy's exhausted. And now he's got to hand pump the gear. Remember, that was the first thing he had a problem with? He's got a little hand crank that he has to put in a place on the floor. And he's got to like do like this over and over and over again to get the gear to manually come down. It's exhausting all by itself. I can't imagine being totally spent and then trying to do that while you're wrestling uh, the airplane. I, I don't. How much fuel do you got remaining? I've still got a half tank. So I can't stay up here for another two hours. It'll kill me. Mr. Ray and Charlie, we're going to need some of that arm strength to do some pumping to get that gear down, though, whenever you're feeling up to it. So he's giving him some hope. Come on, man. You can do this. All right. I know you got it. Airplane's pretty much in controlled flight now. Probably wearing this guy out. All right. I got... I got the gears down now. I've hit the gears. They went down. Okay, this is going to instill a lot of hope in him. He pumped the gear down, and he got it down. He's got three down and locked. At this point, if I'm piloting this airplane, I'm thinking I'm, this is going to have a successful outcome. I think I'm going to pull up on top of everything else. Sorry, guys. That's right, Charlie. Charlie. From, from my point of view, you're you're doing great. The We're, we're keeping up. Your altitude looks good. Your speed looks good. Looks like you're coming back around through the north. And um, we understand you're tired, and uh, we're going to stay with you here until uh, till it's all over. I want to... Did you ever go to work out? You hadn't worked out in a while, and you go to the gym, and you think, I'm going to get into shape all in one day, and you, you kind of overdo it. You overexert your body, and you kind of go to the, run to the back bathroom and throw up. That's exactly what's going on with this guy. He's overexerted himself, and he says, I feel like i got to throw up, and I bet he he does. I don't know if he did or not, but, wow, that's total exertion. Three, Romeo, Charlie, um, we just got back in, uh, in touch with the tower. They're going to... Um it's true visually that they've got a, um, a gear down indication visually for you as well. We understand that you do have three green indications on the, um, in, the in the flight deck, and we want to make sure that we've got the uh, visual cue as well. Hi, right, sounds good. I mean, I don't. I mean, at this point, I don't think we can do anything. If they're not down, we'll have to tell you in. I think I got the airport to my left. Would that be right about 11 o'clock? Yes, sir. 11 o'clock and about um, about 15 miles. I'll see if I can manhandle this bitch. That's right, Romeo Charlie. Roger, you're cleared uh, for an approach into Greenwood. And um, you take that, that you do have the field and so you're going to be with me all the way in. Oh, okay. Um, it looks like to me I've got to come back to the right pretty soon. Is that right? Uh, I think anything to the right is going to push you a little bit short, but uh, that's just according to the radar. If you think you need to come to the right a little bit, um, I'll leave the, leave the flying up to you at, uh, at your perspective. Uh, you've been doing a good job. I'll work with you. Three runway, Charlie. Runway three six. Tower says you are cleared to land. Equipment services are standing by. You're probably about as tired as I am. All right, I still don't have the airport, so we're gonna have to find it here, guys. Okay, at least this guy's still got a little bit of a sense of humor left, which is really a hopeful sign. And I think he's now convinced that he's gonna make it. Uh, but boy, is he exhausted. Three runway, Charlie. You do not yet have the airport. Ah, oh, I don't. I'm sorry. I don't. Okay, number one, three, Romeo, Charlie. Uh, if you can make a right-hand turn to a uh, heading of a 360, the airport is nine miles at one o'clock. All right, I think I might have it. That's Piper. Has the lights on high. Number three, Romeo, Charlie. Piper's saying uh, whatever speed gives you the best pitch control of the aircraft is the speed you should fly. I've got the lock point. Number three, Romeo, Charlie, Roger. Again, you are... Uh, clear to land on runway 36. All right, thank you, guys. I'll talk to you in a minute. Is he going to make it? Yep, he has a successful landing. Wow. All right, and he helps still rock. All the way to the left. Glad you ride safe. Good to hear. How are you going? Great job, Three Mike Charlie. Great job, great job. Great job on everybody's part on this one. This guy is a real hero, and the air traffic controller that stuck with him through this whole thing is as well. He kept him calm, kept him focused. Uh, this guy is getting despondent at a couple of points, but the gear coming down was a big deal. Um, he still had a little bit of sense of humor towards the end, and then he just manhandles that airplane. And I can't imagine, I've never been in an airplane that the controls locked like that. Um, not sure how that happens on a Cheyenne, but it did here. 
This guy has a successful outcome, and it was a total collaboration between great air traffic control and a pilot who stuck with this thing um, to get it all the way down on the ground with a safe outcome. Well, now you know. I'm Captain Steve. Fly safe.